day. We're very honored, right after 4th of July, to welcome Dr. Lisa Palmer. <laughs> Lisa, thanks so much for joining hey, us today. Thanks for having me. And it's such a beautiful studio here. I can't even believe it. This is your new location. I was at your old location. And it's fantastic. I can't believe all the rooms and everything that you have to offer here. So thanks for having me. My pleasure, Lisa. And um, I know we got some serious topics today to talk about. And I and want you to- Hopefully we'll have fun. Not always, too serious. We always okay? have. We always have fun. <laughs> We always have fun. Um, I want you to tell our audience, for those who tune into live from FSS and just tuning in maybe for the first time and seeing our, our program, a little bit about yourself. Who is Dr. Lisa Palmer? Oh boy, I always get asked this question. It's like my resume gets longer and longer and <laughs> longer and there's so much there. Um, who is Dr. Lisa Palmer? Well, I'm in the field and the helping field. I, I want to help people. I, I've pretty much dedicated my life to that. I do a lot of television now, as you know, and I've done a lot of network interviews and so on and so forth. And people say, where's your career in that? But really my heart and soul is, is in helping people. And I want to try to do that as much as I possibly can. And what I do is help people to transform their lives. Um, what I do is combining the spiritual, the um, scientific, and the intuition that I have as a healer, as well with functional medicine, to um, help people to create a different reality for themselves and then live in that reality uh, in the best way that they possibly can. Um, so I take all of that and all of my experience and I bring that into therapy um, as an artist uh, in psychotherapy. Can you tell us a little bit about the type of clients that you service? Who goes to Dr. Lisa Palmer for therapy? People who come to see, I actually get a lot of calls, uh, pe but people who come to see me are very serious about wanting change in their life. Um, most of my patients have been around the block. They've been to inpatient treatment centers. They have been to numerous therapists before seeing me. They've tried many different avenues and um, they found that it hasn't worked and they found out about what I do and my approaches and um, for many of them it's been a, a last stop. So what I do with them is I first begin with an assessment and strategy session to look at the the matrix of their life, you know, what happened to them to get them to where they are now and what's happening in their bodies, what's happening in their relationships, what have they tried that hasn't worked and what it is that they want to achieve. Based on everything that I see there, um, and based on um, their thinking style, and based on the way that I work, I can pretty much make a prediction about how many sessions I'm gonna need to work with somebody, what, kind, and what dose of sessions, and what, um, what the changes are. Uh, that we're going to be able to see in them over what course of time. So I'm really looking at trying to help someone get complete results and um, I'm taking on a project with every patient. So we're combining functional medicine along with psychotherapy to make that happen. And how does your practice of psychotherapy and the services that you offer at the Renew Center of mm -hmm. Florida differ from other psychotherapists or psychologists? Well, like I said, we actually combined uh, functional medicine with psychotherapy, so very much being aware of how the mind in, affects the body and how the body affects the mind. Um, it's actually a very, very complicated process if you want to help somebody to achieve total healing and wellness. And oftentimes what we're trying to do is help people to get um, off of their psychotropic medications because we're finding that People, a lot of people, um, are turning to psychotropic, you know, psychiatric medications as a way to relieve their anxiety, their depression, um, and other mental health illnesses that they have, or insomnia. A lot of people struggle with insomnia, um, and so with with that, a lot of people are still unhappy because they don't realize that these medications are not happy pills they're taking you know, these medications and, and maybe these medications are helping them to dull some of their pain, but they're still not as motivated as they would otherwise be or they're very flatlined or they're, they're just not happy. And then what happens is they start on one medication maybe for um, 
you know, depression, and then th that medication might have an anxiety effect, and so then now they're on another medication, and then after that, you know, they're having trouble with insomnia, so now they're on another medication. So we often find that um, people are on cocktails of medications and still not getting the help that they need. So we look at what the actual core issues are that are causing maybe the anxiety or the depression or the insomnia. And oftentimes what we find is that um, these are symptoms of post-traumatic stress. Now a lot of times people think that post-traumatic stress um, is something that's experienced maybe if you were in an accident or you were raped or you perhaps came back from war came back from war or something very major what they don't understand is that our minds actually process painful experiences very different than normal regular memory processing and so what happens is because of that um, we are left with remnants of of um, of that pain and that suffering that sort of travels with us throughout our life. Um, and, and for many people, they sort of become frozen in that experience. So what I mean by that is, for instance, um, <clears throat> let's just say you were, um, let's say you were raped, you know, or you were sexually assaulted. Um, in that experience of being sexually assaulted, your mind and your body went through a separation to survive that that experience okay a, a separation being a dissociative state and in that dissociative state um, your emotions get stored in one part of the brain your um, the event gets stored in another part of the brain and then you're left with the core rooted belief system so you form belief systems as a result of the events that happen to you and oftentimes when there's a negative event that happens to you you're left with a negative belief system maybe um, I'm you know I'm out of control I'm not I'm unwanted I'm unloved I'm unworthy you also might be left with a, an emotional reaction and that might be um, being on alert um, feeling unsafe. So you might then find yourself um, having trouble sleeping at night, for instance. But people don't often link the two, the two um, effects together. So, uh, so what we'll do is, what, so when that happens, um, that person sort of becomes frozen in their experience. And now that experience um, informs their attitudes, informs their behaviors on a conscious and a subconscious level. So even if over time someone thinks, oh, I'm over that, they may be left with the remnants of the experiences of that event that have then now informed their current relationships or their decisions. Um, and this is oftentimes what people call sabotaging behavior. So we have um, certain techniques that we can utilize to, tr to basically rewrite the way our, our mind um, experiences things that happen to us on a subconscious level that um, may be affecting us and it may be out of our awareness that it affects us. So once that's transformed, we basically are then reshaping um, our next steps in life. And it's, it's pretty much the, the best way that we have to begin to reauthor for ourselves on a subconscious level how the future takes place. Um, and so everything that I do is about helping somebody to live in the future and in the present in the best way that they possibly can. So even if I am working on the past, it's only um, to help that person live a better life in the future. So if you had to sum up in one sentence, what is your mission statement as a psychotherapist and the program director of the Renew Center of Florida? What would your mission statement be? My mission statement has always been to help people to renew their lives and to transform themselves to be able to live in alignment with their dreams and aspirations and to live a balanced life. And you know, Scott, our, our minds and our bodies are so intimately connected that when you experience anxiety, um, that anxiety translates in a, on a physical level 
in the way that your body releases chemicals and those chemicals how it affects your body you know with tension and panic or the release of chemicals like your adrenal glands a lot of people suffer from adrenal fatigue or a lot of people will have gut related gut health issues now the the physical aspect also affects your mental and emotional health and like I just mentioned with gut health issues um, a lot of the neurotransmitters um, which are in the chem on the chemical end of our mental health serotonin and dopamine and a bunch of other transmitters are actually created in the gut so when you have poor gut health there's a very good chance that your neurotransmitter levels are, are being affected and this is also something that we look at so this is why it's so important not just to um, look at diagnosis or just look at what's going on in the mind but actually what's happening in the body so we can get the two to work together and sync with each other the way they're supposed to be. I'm going to ask you momentarily more about some of the therapies that you offer. If you're just joining us just now, this is live from FSS. I'm Scott Wolfson, your host and the owner of Florida Sun Studios. We're honored to have Dr. Lisa Palmer on set with us today for the hour. I want to give a special shout out to fans of our show and fans of Lisa's joining us. Paul Tolini, Larry Lawton, Larry Lawton, a friend of ours, uh, Andy Orton. I want to thank everyone and Tom Bohm for joining in. And want to encourage everyone to send us your questions and comments. Dr. Palmer is here for you to answer any questions, concerns that you have. Um, mental health issues, what some consider to be a taboo subject, it's something that in one way or another we all have to face and we're all human. And Dr. Palmer is here to help us and to uh, guide us through the different therapies that her Renew Center of Florida offers clients. So I want to thank everyone and Dr. Palmer, again, it's a pleasure having you on set. Fascinating talk. Yeah. I feel like I, I should be taking notes here. <laughs> um, I'm lucky I'm recording the session because I'm going to go back yeah. and play it and, and see, you know, make sure I dotted all my I's, crossed all my T's, and what's, got all the... You know what's really interesting is that people understand is that we really are the author of our own lives. And, um, <clears throat> and our past does, in fact, shape our future because it does shape the way that we think and the way that we act. Um, Fortunately for my patients, I have the ability to, to help them to, to change the way that their mind can see their past so that their past doesn't affect them. And emotionally, if they were involved in an emotionally charged incident, for instance, I have the capability to get them to um, not feel the pain of that experience, not feel the sadness related to that experience, not feel the anger that's related to that experience, so that, for instance, if they were in a, a relationship where maybe they were abandoned, right, or they were, you know, rejected, a lot of people actually suffer with that um, issue, and what happens is they find themselves maybe in another relationship, and suddenly they have those fears come up of abandonment and rejection. So even though it didn't happen yet, or or it, it's not happening in that relationship, it's from the correct. previous experience. Right. So what happens is that their mind is pairing what's happening or what could happen now with fear with an experience that happened in the past. So because I'm able to help people change the way their brain sees a traumatic experience that happened in the past, it changes their reaction presently. So that would help a person like that to be able to not respond in that way. And it could be anger. Like a lot of people have anger issues. Um, it's very popular for people to get anger management therapy. Well, the management part of it is just managing your anger, managing being cognitively to say, hey, you know, what causes your anger? What, um, what, what, what are the consequences of doing this behavior? You know, what, what are some techniques that you can do to ground yourself? That's cognitive, okay? That's in here. But it's actually changing the emotional reactions. That emotional reaction, that fight, fight or flight response, that's, that is subconscious. That's what I can also change. That's what I do. So um, that's when you're in that situation, you're not going to respond 
instinctively because a lot of times situations are happening you don't have time to think it's just your natural reaction so that's what I'm focused on changing and don't get me wrong I do do a lot of the cognitive behavioral stuff but um, but the other methods are so much because we're, we're changing the emotion and it's where the emotion happens that people get themselves into trouble but how do you change someone's behavior mm -hmm. that's grounded they're in their 30s or 40s or 50s, maybe older, and it's hard not to use the cliche, but teaching old dog new tricks. How do you change that behavior, mm -hmm. manipulate it, if you will, and get them to change destructive behavior to a more positive? See, asking me a question like that is like asking a, um, a computer programmer, how do they reprogram a computer, right? Because the brain is like a computer and you have to know how to access the the mind and we do it through language and guiding the patient um, through a series of steps um, through a memory that allows them to have a different experience of the memory and for it to be changed forever in their minds so I'm essentially uh, like a computer programmer of the mind Right, so it's not as You're simple. You're the on-support IT staff uh, yeah, over at the much. new center. Or exactly. <laughs> um, so it's it's not as simple as actually saying to someone, "Do this or do that," or "This is what you should do," uh, because if patients were able to do that on their own, whether it be a diet or 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 to just a lot of people know what they should do, but they don't do it. But they don't do it. So just because they go to a therapist who says, hey, you know, you shouldn't do this, and I have all these accolades next to my name, doesn't make a difference because it's, it's not going to make a difference. So do you hold your patients accountable for their own actions? Everybody's accountable for their own actions anyways, you know. Right. Um, but the thing is that I'm, I'm overcoming that patient's resistance, and I do that through use of language, and I do that through hypnotherapy and um, hypnotherapeutic techniques. And I was going to ask you about that next. Well, you know, really what, what primarily therapy is, is um, using language in a particular way through a conversation and it has to be artfully done in, in order to access somebody's psyche and to get them to do things that they want to do but they can't will themselves on their own to do them. So what ends up happening is once you are able to access them psychologically, they begin to have these sparkling moments that happen in their lives where they say, oh wow, you know, like I feel more motivated or I feel less anxious or I'm feeling, um, you know, like, I want, like I'm able to set more boundaries. But they don't necessarily understand how that's happening. They understand some of it, but they don't understand all of it. Interesting. It is. We took a short clip from your website, mm -hmm. the Renew Center of Florida, and we're going to play that clip just in a nutshell of a little bit about the uh, okay. operation. At the Renew Center of Florida, I specialize in working with addictions. It may be that somebody is suffering an eating disorder. It could be that they're suffering from substance abuse issue. It could be that they have some type of other addiction or side effect that's happening in their life that's causing them to suffer. And that's what we're really doing is helping them to overcome that and helping them to break the vicious cycles that are happening so that they can live better lives, all while they're living in their reality-based setting. And that's the old phone number that we used to have. We had to change the number. Uh oh, will you, will you please inform um, the audience how they could reach the Renew Center of Florida? The Renew Center can be reached at 1 800 509 0244. Um, so that's how you can reach the Renew Center. And we have your social media tag up there, too. Oh, yeah, great. At the Renew Center. That's great. We've got you covered, Dr. Lisa Palmer. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say that one of the one of the mentions in the video was reality-based setting, how we work with people in their reality-based setting, and this is key because um, it's so difficult to help people get real results while they live in their reality-based setting, but it's it's essential because so many people find that when they go to inpatient treatment, they're taken away from all, all their triggers, all their life, you know, and it's almost like a vacation, if you will, sort of. Not Most people don't like inpatient, but it's sort of like a vacation. 
and they're secluded there and then when they come out they're exposed to everything and then slowly all those those negative behaviors start to creep in you know they're exposed to their family they're exposed to the pressures at work they're exposed to everything in their life if they were an addict they might be exposed to some of the bad environments that they were in before um, helping people to get results while they live in their reality-based setting lets them see that their their progress is real and sustainable so this is the movement now, and we also offer um, sober escorts for people. Which what is, is a, a sober escort? A sober escort is a service that, for instance, if you're suffering with an addiction and you don't want to go to inpatient treatment, but you want somebody to monitor you all the time, um, w there's live-in sober escorts, and we we coordinate with that. Wow, it's the first I've heard of that. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's pretty much cutting edge. Everything we do is cutting edge. And um, this is absolutely perfect for someone who wants to work, someone who wants to get um, treatment, uh, and and do it in life. You know, if you can afford it, you can you can get the best. Our friend Larry Lawton had a couple of questions. Shoot, we're gonna, Larry. <laughs> uh, we're going to try to keep this PG rated, even for Mr. Lawton here. Before we get to Larry's question, want to give a special shout out to George Boza, Joshua Wallach, and Mitch Friedman for joining the broadcast want to encourage everyone to send us your questions and comments. And Dr. Lisa Palmer will do her best to answer everyone during the broadcast. For those of you we don't get to during the broadcast, the video will be edited, repurposed on our blog at floridasunstudios.com as well as on Facebook. Um, Mr. Lawton, Larry Lawton, quite a character as we know, One of he my says favorites. we're ducking his question. All right, so oh. we're going to get to it. Um, Larry wants to know, hold on, we got to scroll back up here. Hang on, hang on. His question, of course, had to deal with um, the human anatomy and, and sex. And Larry <laughs> wants to know, where is he? He just took it off. Of course. He wanted to know um, about keeping a healthy sexual relationship. If one person wants it more than the other, how does a couple, what do they do? I mean, how do they make a happy, how do they get to a happy medium in a, in a, in a healthy sexual relationship? Okay, Larry. I am not a sex therapist. I just want to say that I can make a referral for you <laughs> if you need one. Um, but I, you know, most of the problems that couples have with regard to sex first starts with their relationship. Okay? Starts with their relationship. So oftentimes if there's problems going on in the communication in their relationship um, or certain other needs that are not being met, they're going to have problems in their sex life, you know. So, I would say that it starts there. Um, I don't know if I've answered Larry's question, uh, but uh, they have to communicate about it, Larry. Communications, and now Tom Bohm is kind of uh, taking a, a joke on Larry, saying, "PG and Larry, they just don't go together." Well, <laughs> we appreciate Dr. Lisa for. Uh, but we love your questions. Clearing that we up. love and, your and, questions. And uh, Larry or anyone else, if you have some questions, some real concerns, some issues that you're battling, whether they're mental, emotional, physical, please, that's why we have Dr. Lisa Palmer. It is tough, though, when someone has more of a sex drive than the other, you know, or they have different goals. It's a really good question that Larry asked because if the one partner has different goals for the sex life than the other, that could be a real problem in the relationship, for sure, absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful question, and I think that um, it's one of the, intimacy is a huge topic, you know, for couples, and some couples, intimacy is more, you know, sexual intimacy means more to some couples than other couples, so you have to take it on a couple by couples basis of what's important to, you know, the individual parties, you know, and, um, I'm very open-minded about that. I, what, see, when I work with people, even though I have maybe my own belief systems, personal belief systems about whatever, when I work with people, I'm working inside their reality. So I'm very open-minded, and that's why I could work with anybody, um, because I'm working within their reality to help them to get to optimal functioning in their relationship or their life and whatever capacity that might be. You know, I. That's why I can work with someone from any political party, any background, um, any religious background, any race. Um.
It doesn't matter. It, it transcends. Your, it your transcends. goal is to help others regardless of yeah, it really their does. political affiliation, their religious and that's Because it's not about it's not about me imposing my belief system to say, you know what, this is what you should do based on what I feel I would do for myself. It's it it, it extends beyond that to looking at your particular life and reality and what your goals are and then working within that that framework. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Dr. Palmer, I think our audience here would be very interested. I'm sure a lot of them recognize you from being on uh, network television. You're both nationally and internationally known. You've appeared on various network uh, television shows um, here in the U.S. and internationally. And as someone who's a frequent contributor, we put together a montage of some of your news clips. Oh, Want to just roll that uh, footage for our audience here. There is that pressure in America to achieve the American dream, and people definitely have a hard time with that work-life balance. Well, there's about 44 million Americans in this country that suffer from mental health conditions. You're down there in Florida. Did you see any of this? A lot of times people's symptoms could be masked, especially when you're in a yoga class. You can't always, you know, judge a book by its cover. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm very much for women's issues and women's advancement. And Donald Trump has done a lot to actually help women. Oh. He's, I work worked in the Clinton White House uh, for the press secretary's office. You know? Well, I hear a lot of the concerns in social media now and all around about what this new bill could mean for people with pre-existing conditions, and that includes mental health. So these drugs, because of the chemicals and the fillers, do have side effects for people, and people are not getting to the root cause of their problems. We do see that actually practicing prayer and positive thinking does have a very good effect in lowering anxiety, depression, and just making us feel a lot more mindful and good about ourselves. A lot of people have a hard time asking for help, and uh, sometimes this is especially a problem with celebrities because right. they don't want their information to be known mm -hmm. and uh, they're very private and Prince was a very private person. Well, thanks for being with us oh, and clearing up this uh, mysterious topic. <laughs> it's very mysterious, exorcism. but yeah. very interesting at the same time. All right, don't watch that exorcism special. Stay tuned to Newsmax TV and watch Hardline tonight at 9 p.m. And Dr. Lisa Palmer, thanks so much for being with us. Always great to see you. You too. Lisa, very impressive. You are definitely a go-to authority um, when it comes to um, sensitive issues, mental health issues, other breaking news stories where you contribute to different news networks, um, an expert in the area of mental health as a psychotherapist. Um, let me ask you, what are some of the most difficult cases or challenges that you stumble upon in your day-to-day -day, um, world? I have to be honest, and. As far as clients, as far as patients? Issues, not, not particular patients, but just what types of issues, problems that they're having. What, what's some of the most difficult um, circumstances that you find yourself dealing with? Well, I actually work with a lot of really complicated cases and I enjoy it, okay? Um, a lot of the cases that I take on, other people probably would freak out, you know, and be like, oh my gosh, how do you do that? But I think it's like anything, you know, the the more skilled you are at something, the more interesting it becomes um, to work on more complicated cases. So it's not uncommon for me to work with people who have multiple issues going on and they often say to me like, can you really help me solve my problems because I have tremendous amount of anxiety, I have tremendous amount of depression, I had suicidal ideation, I tried to commit suicide several times, I have an eating disorder, I tried to overdose on you know, painkillers. I have all these family problems. I have, I have all these life issues. I have health issues. I have um, insomnia. I have like just this whole plethora of problems, just all mumbled jumbo together. Um, doesn't doesn't frighten me. What what actually concerns me is people who don't have a motivation to change. People who don't have the motivation to seek therapy, to seek the right kind of help, or they want change, but they won't make the investment in themselves to do it. That concerns me. It concerns me for those people because um, if you don't invest in your health and you don't invest in your possibilities, what do you have in this world? 
what what is the point once you lose your health that's everything's downhill it's, from there your mental health and your your physical health are everything you know and it's your happiness and happiness is uh, that can't be bought you but know, do you so ever important. feel for the security of your patients your clients as well as your own safety too I know you deal with some very delicate yeah. Um, traumatic type cases, right. do you ever feel like, oh my God, what did I get myself into? This person's a danger not only to themselves, but possibly to me. <sighs> Have you ever encountered that? I've, I've actually worked with a lot of very severe people, absolutely. Um, you know, especially when I worked in the hospitals, I worked with schizophrenics and I worked with um, a lot of people who were in the system for a long time with dissociative identity disorder, multiple personalities. and. Um, a lot of other serious co-occurring issues. Um, where I am now with my patients and, and how I work, I, I don't, I, I, I'm able to see through and I don't get afraid of, of a lot of things. It's not that I'm not cautious and not that I, I'm not alert, um, but I'm, I'm very much aware of what's going on and I'm able to help people to relieve of their symptoms pretty quickly. Uh, so it, no, it doesn't. It doesn't concern me. But I, I know it does stress a lot of providers out because when you are working with some very, very heavy issues, and you know, your people are are walking the ledge, it's hard. It can be very difficult. I imagine with the type of sensitive issues that you deal with, mm -hmm. a lot of people I could assume a, a good majority of them are shy. They're timid about opening up to you. How do you go about gaining that person's trust? It's their first time, a consultation with you. They may not be familiar with your practice. They were referred to from a friend or family member. Maybe they found you online. They saw you on the news. How do you go about gaining that person's trust so that they could open up to you and feel that they're in a place of uh, comfort, that it's not well, a danger? That, that starts with the very first phone call that they make to me because I spend the time talking to them um, I'm not just somebody who picks up the phone and hangs up. You know, I try to um, give people information and education, and even if they can't actually come in and see me or, or whatever, I, I try to, to give them something. Um, the next thing is when they, when they come in, uh, because our offices are not sterile, play, it's not like a sterile, doctor's office. I have it, this was my second home, okay, and I have it set up that way. So you come in and you're, you know, you're like in a living room, you know, you're in a big living room and this is your place and your space and it's a, it's a healing place and you know that you're in the hands of somebody who's, who's positive and who's there to, to heal. Um, and we serve them, you know, we, we treat them, it's like you're coming to my home you know, and, and, um, and you're special. You're not just anybody walking through the door. You're not just any other patient. You're a special person. I, I also work with some celebrities too and people who are very high profile and they like that kind of treatment. But the bottom line is we treat everybody that way. Um, and the environment is a simulated environment of how people are supposed to be treated you know, of how it's human. It's, it's how you're supposed to treat someone. And in this environment, um, people are really growing and they're experimenting with new aspects of themselves that are coming out, whether it be they're, they're um, showing emotion that they haven't showed before, they're um, able to laugh, and maybe they haven't laughed in a while. And they feel comfortable in that atmosphere, so then that that gets translated into into everyday life. So it becomes an experimental zone. Um, the third thing is that I, I start with an assessment and strategy session, and I have a series of like questions that I ask about the person in their life. And as I ask these questions, the person can see from that very first session how I can piece together and know things about them before they even tell me, you know, and they would be like, well, how do you know that? Psychic? Um, no, but like, for example, um, like I might ask a person, a person might reveal to me that maybe they were a self-harmer, right? So I would find out when that happened. I would find out where they were self-harmer, where 
where they cut. Now, if they cut on their thighs, that gives me information about them that I'm saying to myself, oh, okay, they cut on their thighs. Maybe there's, there was some kind of sexual abuse that went on here. Now, they don't know that I would know that, but there's certain clues that they're revealing to me, not even knowing that they are. And then, um, and then that kind of will lead me to other questions. And then before you know it, they're revealing stuff to me because it's the truth they you know I've figured it out and they feel comfortable in that and so I can piece things together about how someone is developed and by the end of that they feel very comfortable like I know what I'm talking about and that I can really help them to understand and to, to grow so I think that is the first thing is when you're, um, you become of one mind with somebody, they really kind of feel like you understand their experiences. Sometimes before they even speak about them, they instantly develop a rapport with you. And rapport is, is a huge thing in therapy. You know, you do spend many, many years learning the art of that, learning the art of making people comfortable with And I imagine with, you. with most folks that you treat as patients, it's not a one-off thing. They're there for a continued uh, session, whether it's weeks, months, years. I mean, it's, it's patients are there. They're committed to your programming, your techniques and your services. Um, it's, it's over time. It's gradual that you're Most providing this therapy. Most of the therapy. patients that I um, sign up, they're doing a 60 to 90 day to wellness programs. Um, sometimes beyond that, depending on what is needed. But, you know, my, my methods and my techniques over the years have, has, um, has gotten a lot more, um, I've just gotten a lot more successful with it and more rapid, you know, more rapid results. So with more rapid results, um, I don't have to re-sign people um, for additional hours. You know, I, can do, I could do the job in, in a 90-day or a four-month period where maybe before it would take me a little longer. It was still short-term for that level clientele. Um, but, um, but now I can, I can, I can make it, I can shorten it even more, um, to get, help people to get more rapid results because there's certain interventions that I used to take a while to do because I would have to prep the patient for those interventions. And now I can do that a lot faster and get, and, and get to them sooner. And so they can see results faster. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm also helping them to change their programming, negative belief systems, um, are crucial to change um, because they really guide how we think. And we all have negative belief systems, but it's a matter of making our positive belief systems outweigh our negative belief systems. So that's another part of the programming that we work on. Lisa, let me ask you, you know, people when they hear the word or the term, <laughs> the phrase mental health, it's taboo in a lot of in a lot of people's minds. I think we've maybe a soci society opened up to that more, and it's become more acceptable. But you know, people when they talk about illnesses, if it's a physical illness, or you know, they're having surgery on a body part, or uh, d different medical illnesses, um, they go for care and treatment. But a lot of people are reluctant to open up about mental health because they see it's taboo. How do you break that taboo and just break that thinking? Because if someone, whether they're diabetic, they've got heart disease, or they have a mental illness, they're all illnesses, aren't they? Mm -hmm. You know, there's about um, 40 million Americans um, with anxiety, um, mental health issues. I think media is actually doing a really good job these days helping to bring mental health awareness um, through celebrities and celebrities have come forward and talked about their depression or their anxiety and their their mental health problems and I think anytime a celebrity talks about um, their intimate life and you can see beyond the mask it always gets people interested and re reflective and realizing hey this person's not perfect and I'm I'm very much like them you know, and we can see a more human side to people, which is so, so needed. So I think that is um, contributing to, to people being more aware of maybe their own mental health. 
Right, and celebrities, as we all know, they go through the same growing pains and the same issues that we all go through. And you said yourself that you treat and work with many celebrities. Um, you know, a lot of people, they'll, we idolize celebrities, yeah. a lot of people, and look up to them. And even though they may have um, destructive behavior or so forth, we'll look in these, I, you know, I was reading a blog you wrote um, talking about body image. And you see these perfect bodies that are on these muscle and fitness and these different women's magazines. And um, in one way, it's inspiration for, for some folks, but another way, it could be detrimental and destructive for some people. They think, oh, I've got to have that body. I've got to, yeah. I've got to look like this person. Yeah. And they'll um, just destroy themselves with their behaviors, their eating habits, their mental, physical well-being. Um, do you see a lot of that with people trying to um, mimic what they see in in the news, the, the quote unquote yeah. perfect celebrity. Um, it's a really good. It's a really great topic. It's a hot topic, um, especially considering that about eighty percent of women say that that images that they see in the the media about body image create insecurities in them. Um, but most of the people that come and see me where they have an eating disorder, because I do work with that a lot, eating disorders, anorexia, bulimia, binge eating, um, there's so much more, and especially with my research, because I did extensive research on the topic of eating disorders for my doctorate, my dissertation. It's so much more than media images, believe me, that contribute to somebody um, developing an eating disorder. And as men and women are, we're all exposed to it. I think women probably have a little more pressures than men do about how to look. Um, and especially as you age, you know, there's a lot of pressures. Um, but, um, but, you know, it's, it, it is so much more that goes into why somebody develops an eating disorder um, versus, you know, not just the, the media images. Um, we tend to think here in, in our Western culture that eating disorders are pretty much solely driven by media images. And we found in research that um, immigrants who come to this country who are, are going through a transition um, from one country to another and they're trying to assimilate and they are dealing with feeling like an outsider and they're dealing with the anxieties of that transition have developed eating disorders as well. And nobody really talks about that, but... Because it's considered taboo, an off-limits subject? Um, maybe, maybe it's just an unawareness, an unawareness of looking more globally at what um, contributes to an eating disorder, and we tend to just say, body image. You know, we just tend to say, magazines. You know, but we're all exposed to it, and not all of us have an eating disorder. We may have some, you know, negative body image ideas sometimes, but that doesn't mean that we become anorexic or that we're bulimic um, or is, that we're harming ourselves. Is part of your therapy and way to recovery um, telling people, look, it's okay. It's okay. You are who you are. Um, obviously, not the destructive behavior, but. You don't have to be a size two or one. If you're a size four or six, you, you are who you are. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Is that part of what you tell a lot of folks that come to you that, you know, to, to be more acceptance, acceptable of themselves? You know? Yeah, but you know how many people have told them that? You know, they already, they've heard right, that. But, but you being the authority, the expert, someone who, who deals with this leads you the credibility that maybe friends or family don't have. Not, you know, the eating disorder voice is such a strong voice that the eating disorder voice doesn't really, doesn't really want to listen, you know, to even authorities. Let me explain something to you about body image and something that people really need to understand. Body image is really your image of yourself. What does that mean? Your image of yourself, your perception. So when you look in the mirror, you are, it's what you see. It's not necessarily what actually is. So that perception that you have is informed by your belief systems about yourself. So if you look in the mirror and you see someone who's worthless or someone who um, is unloved, 
someone who is unwanted, someone who doesn't have a voice, someone who is put down, um, it, that becomes reflected in, in what you see. So you can have someone who is in wonderful shape, but they look at themselves and they say, like, I'm fat. So what you see on the outside is not what they're projecting. What they see on the outside is not in alignment with what they see on the inside. Right. And a lot of people who have eating disorders have a disconnect between head and body as a result of their own traumas and how their mind has processed it. So they don't even feel that their body is theirs. They look at their body as like they're not even connected to themselves. So there's a dissociative aspect to to um, to their experience with themselves. And there's this idea that for, for many of them that, for instance, if I'm thinner, I'll be more accepted. I will be loved. I will be, I'm never enough. When they haven't accepted who they are to begin with. Right. So They haven't accepted themselves. So this is why that, that, that work needs to be done so that they can reclaim themselves in the way that they're supposed to. And that uh, many of their negative coping skills start to diminish because when when you're happier with who you are you'll find that some of the negative many of the negative coping skills that you that have come into your life they don't need to be there anymore so you gradually start to let go of of those of of those negative things I want to pick up on our line of questioning, but if you're just joining us just now, this is live from FSS. I'm Scott Wolfson, your host and the owner of Florida Sun Studios. Florida Sun Studios is an independent broadcast studio located right here in South Florida, beautiful downtown Fort Lauderdale. We service not only the major news and sports networks, but we also service the community at large. We have a, a vast green screen production studio where Dr. Palmer and I are sitting in right now, and we service different industries, everyone from the medical industry, the legal industry, the business industry. So we're here for you. If you have uh, a need for a professional video, be it taped or live, um, we have a full service broadcast studio. We are the professional turnkey solution. Our tagline, you could say, is broadcast production 24-7, 365. We're here. Our doors never close. When most businesses close at 9 or open at 9 and close at 5, our motto is, we never close our doors. We are always open. So if you have a project that needs some TLC in the evening, on the weekends, holidays, call Florida Sun Studios. Visit our website at floridasunstudios.com. You can send us an email, info at floridasunstudios.com. Uh, getting back to Dr. Palmer. Yeah, I was, I was going to say that, um, you know, about healing and just on a more global scale, you know, if you can't, if you can't afford fancy therapies and not everybody can. And we see people, you know, all over the world who, as part of life, go through pain, whether it be the loss of a person, the death of a loved one, um, tragedies, accidents, just horrific things that happen in people's lives that cause us as humans tremendous pain and it's our it's our responsibility to um, to live in alignment with what's positive and what's going to bring us hap happiness and health in our lives in spite of that pain to realize that everybody's going to go through this and every day can be a battle, you know. There could be something, someone who's trying to put you down or some type of loss that you've, that you've suffered. And really, um, our goal should be our own happiness and our own health. So what we need to do is, first of all, to have gratitude for what we have. Um, and a lot of people they want, want, want. They say, well, only if I have this can I do this. Um, only when I win the lottery can I, you know, have fun in my life. They're waiting for something to happen before something else can happen. And I say to you, um, look at what you have right now and try to make the most of what you have now to develop that. You know, stop looking for what you don't have to create. Start looking at what you do have in order to be able to build upon that. 
Um, and I think that's, that's a, one of the big keys to success. Um, I think another big key to success, and maybe this is just my personal belief system, and I'll take, you know, I'll take credit for that, is that when you're in a real down and out place and you don't know who to turn to or maybe you can't afford, you know, to get the right kind of treatment, what do you do? Who do you turn to? A lot of people, they get away from they get away from their soul. They get away from spirituality. I find that when people are most depressed, when they're most anxious, they're, they've just, they've kind of meandered away from, instead of, instead of turning to their spirit, okay, they turned to alcohol. They turned to smoking. They turned to drugs. Instead of turning to healthy activities, they turn to unhealthy activities. And they wonder, why things aren't going well. Because when you're not feeling good, it's so hard to do good things when you're not feeling good. But that's the key, okay? The key is, on a cognitive level, to do good things even if you don't feel good. Because it's not it's about... It's a state of mind. Yeah, because you don't have to feel good to do good things. That's, that's where a lot of people go wrong, you know, they have to foot, you have to, every single day, do your best. You know, I, I tell some of my friends, I said, look, every day I put in 85 to 100% of whatever I can for that day, every day, you know, I, I do what I can do. And what do I get back? What do you think I get back, Scott? I think what you put into it. No. More. No. Less. Less. Every day I get back maybe five percent, maybe ten percent. But how are you? What are you, what are you using to measure? I mean, I'm thinking. I, you know, you. It's like if you make an investment, what do you get back from that investment? You know. Are there times what, where you're getting back more than you put into it? Sometimes. Sometimes. You know. Sometimes you have days you go, "Wow, that was an awesome day." Right? Like a lot came in, whatever that a lot is, a lot of friendship, a lot of success, a great opportunity, a chance to be on your show, okay? <laughs> but I'm just saying to you that most of the time I put in 85 to 100%, whether it's 85% uh, into my workouts, 85% into marketing my business, 85% into my relationships. 85 to 100 percent into taking care of myself, and I only get five to 10 percent back a day. Let me ask you a silly question: Why aren't you putting 100 percent of effort in? Because it's I don't I don't believe in that. I tr sometimes my 100 percent is only 85. Okay, because it's all I can do. Some days I'm okay, too so tired no, to so, go to the so gym. So it is 100 percent. I guess you're right. I guess I guess you know if you can make that argument, you know. But some days you look at yourself, you say, you know, I could have done more today. But I did my best. See, a lot of people look at perfection, you know, and they get a little hard on themselves when they don't achieve as much as they wanted to for that day. I'm pretty realistic. Okay. I get like that too. In, in terms I, of balance. I'm like, there's not enough hours in the day to get done <laughs> when I have to get done. Yeah. It just seems like time is flying by. Obviously, we have a lot of fun here at FSS. We do. This is the <laughs> studio to be at. But I feel like there's not enough hours in the day and it's like, God, can I just turn back the clock a couple hours? I want to get some more done. I want to contact this person, you know, right. film this, do that. But you got to be happy with that 5%. You got to be happy with the 10%, <laughs> okay? This is another, I think this is where a lot of people go wrong too. And they say like, why aren't I happy? Why, why aren't I getting enough? It's not enough. It's not enough. Well, it's like, be happy with the 5 or 10%. Okay, so you put in 85%, but listen, did you enjoy it? Right. Did you but is there enjoy anything, putting in the 85%? But is there anything wrong with wanting to be more productive? No. I think you should aim for your best. Okay. You know, I think you should aim for your best. I'm going to aim for 120%, Dr. Palmer. <laughs> Don't wear yourself out, you know, because I think balance is key, too. I really believe in that. And I think a lot of people run themselves into the ground, and it's very hard to, to be happy that way. You know, recently in the news was... Uh, a uh, story about Maria Menounos, who was Miss Teen Massachusetts um, when I was Miss Vermont USA, and 
she's gone on and she's done very well and she's very successful but recently she was diagnosed with a, a brain tumor and that tumor was removed and thankfully benign but in one of her interviews she spoke about how she needs to make time for more balance in her life because as successful as she is she realized that she was going 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 you know so we have to define success for ourselves and what that means and i you know i know that for me in my own life my success has been over time it's been very slow you know one baby step at a time none of this for me ever happened overnight and i'm still growing and there's so much that i want to do um but what i want to do is so much more than what i'm doing not not necessarily in regard to television or, or anything, although I'd welcome opportunities, um, but so much more that I feel like I have to do here. Um, you feel like you have a bigger, before, a, a larger purpose yeah, in life? Yeah. What is that purpose? Um, I want to impact as many people as I can, you know, in, in as many um, ways that I can. Yeah. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you. I know. Without getting political, because Florida Sun Studios, <laughs> as, as everyone knows, we service everyone on the left, on the right, in the middle. We don't take a side in any politics. Florida Sun Studios is a home to all our guests and varying dif different viewpoints. It's a platform that you could use to get your message out there, promote your viewpoint, your business, um, your brand. I want to ask you, with tying it into what you do with mental health therapy, um, notice the past year, on all sides of the political spectrum, it's been very heated, um, a lot of angry people, and it just seems that in a lot of ways it's unhealthy, mental health-wise, what we're seeing, whether it's on the left or on the right. What's your viewpoint on taking all this politics? Has it divided our country to the point where there's no coming back? Are we on the brink of a civil war? So many good questions. Um, what I see happening is I see politics triggering a lot of people and bringing out their inner their inner realities out into the open. And you're seeing a lot of people um, responding to Donald Trump's President Trump's tweets on Facebook. I mean, on his uh, on his Twitter, on their Facebook. Um, or you know on both sides and I'm seeing a lot of anger and I'm seeing a lot of um, people staying up at night and and putting putting posts so late and I've you know I've done a lot of thinking about this um, my point of view about it is respect I think that we are lacking respect for each other I don't necessarily agree with um, I, f I often find myself sitting there going, I can't believe this was said or done, you know, or just anybody, you know, people on my Facebook who are, who are making comments about criticisms. And, I, you know, on one hand, I, I agree that people have a right to express themselves. But I say, gosh, you know, why are you losing sleep over this? You know, what is wrong with you? You know, there's so many more important things in the world. Like, what are you doing for your community and your family and your world? You know, I'd like to know. Getting obsessed about a tweet or about an argument yeah, I mean, they saw on TV. A, a there's always going to be heard. somebody that you right. disagree with. Right. But it's like, listen, if you want change and you want to be... A, change in the world and you don't agree with what the president is doing or any other political figure well then you know what do something yourself you know be a better person in your community take take charge of yourself and your life and your community and be the best person that you can be and if you can be the best person that you can be and you can go to sleep at night happy with who you've been and that's all you have to be worried about don't worry about donald trump or this one or that one because you can't control any of that you can't control what donald trump is doing 
He's going to do what he's going to do, and he's got to live with it. Some people would say he can't control what he's going to do. Maybe he can't. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's, it's like, yeah, we can comment about it, and we can laugh and right. have some fun. But, I mean, right. at the end of the day, like... What's important? Yeah, at the end of your the health, day... Your health, your family, your life. What that, right. Exactly. Nobody's coming to therapy because of issues with Donald Trump. Right. Are you sure no one's coming to therapy? They're because not coming to therapy right, because right, issues with Donald Trump. Now, I, I did have a patient that was concerned about um, his family moving to another country because of terrorism. Okay, so that was a concern. I mean, that wasn't the only reason why he was there, but you know, these concerns do come up, or if people are in financial crisis, or they're going to lose their health insurance, and these types of problems. And you those know. are real life problems. And those are real life problems, but you have to focus on the things that you can control. Stop focusing on all the things that you can't control, because the more you focus on all those things that you can't control, the worse you're going to feel. What's it going to do for you? You know. Be, be a, um, an agent of change. Be an agent of change in your life, in your communities. And, and you'll feel good when you go to sleep at night. You'll feel like you did something, you know, that was positive for your community and yourself and your life. You can't, you can't be worried. There's so many people that are, are doing the, here are the people doing the wrong things. Here are the people doing the right things. Focus on the people that's doing the right things. You know, focus on the positive. And you're going to get more positive in this, in this world. You can't just, you can't just put all your thoughts on all the negative out there. Because you know what? None of us are going to make it out of this world alive. You know, so what's your legacy? What are you what are you creating? Don't worry about don't worry about the tweets. Worry about yourself. Worry about your families. Worry about your neighbor. That's my thought about it. No, it's some great advice and it's something <laughs> that I think that all of us tend to yeah. overlook. You know, you hear, you know, families having heated discussions and debate and argument, that's okay, but when people become consumed with anything, whether it's politics or um, whatever it is, it's it's not healthy. I think we could agree that there has to be some kind of, as you said, balance in our lives. We have to be able to be open. We have to be able to hear other people's ideas, perspectives, okay, and listen with an opening ear in mind and not feel so offended. We need to ask ourselves, why do I feel so offended by this person? And that's something that as a therapist, we have to do extensive um, inner inner work, okay, to, to learn about how we react to different people and how we, how we internalize things, how we feel about things. And I'm saying that you kind of have to be your own therapist. I think a lot of people in this country are being triggered by President Trump. Um, I'm not saying he's right. I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm just saying, listen, if you're being triggered by it, like, you got to get a hold of that. <laughs> you have to do something about that because it's not healthy. It's not healthy. Any chance we would see? I'm not losing sleep over it. <laughs> Any chance we would see the Donald maybe taking a visit to Dr. Palmer? I would try the door to stay, be open. Well, you know that, that's a whole other no. That's a whole other thing. You know, I I used to. Um, well, as you know, I've been on CNN and and ABC. I think they aired some photos of me um, back in the day when I used to be in the company of of. Mr. Trump and, and um, some of his close friends. But in these, these days, I, I stay away from that because I don't want people to look at me and affiliate me with right. any kind of political party and think that you want to be this neutral. Is, yeah, that this is going to influence my work right, because right. it doesn't. Right. Okay. And as you said, and I have to worked, put that out there. It doesn't. Right. Not only have you worked on that side, right, you've worked on the other side. You worked for the Clinton White House, too. I have. Yeah, I so. have. And, and, you know, and, and I am. Um, you know, being in the field that I'm in, I get to see what's really behind people's masks and who they really are. And when you stop to really listen to somebody, you can see the truth behind their words. If you listen to someone long enough and you really, really listen, you can, you can hear the truth behind their words. And I'm interested in the truth. You know, not, not my judgment of the truth. I want the truth. So we have to listen. I think we have to do more listening um, in, our, in our society today. Listening to ourselves, um, 
and how we feel and being aware of our, our inner world and also listening to other people. And you know what, if you have a different opinion, that's fine. We don't, we don't have to agree on everything. I'm just glad you didn't uh, put me to, you know, perform hypnosis on me. I said, Lisa, Maybe I'm, I did. Maybe whoa, you didn't whoa, have to. Oh, I didn't to, even know. That's said, the whole idea. I've got it's like a, you're not supposed, not supposed to, know to know sometimes. I'm supposed to, <laughs> I said, I said, the show's got to go on. And Dr. Palmer, if I was under hypnosis, you'd be taken over here. Well, how long has it been? How long have we been on air here? Well, we're going to wrap up just momentarily because wow. <laughs> we're having fun here we're with therapy. Fun. Dr. Palmer, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure having you as my guest for the hour or so. You have to send your invoice to our billing department, <laughs> and we'll uh, we'll get to that shortly. But no, in all honesty and sincerity, um, it's an absolute pleasure having someone like you on our show, uh, providing value that uh, that you may not get anywhere else. Thank you so, so much, Dr. For Lisa having Palmer. Me. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much, Thanks Lisa. Thanks so much. And we want to thank everyone who joined us today for our Live from FSS show. And we want to remind you that the broadcast will be repurposed, edited on our Facebook page and also on our blog. You can visit floridasunstudios.com for more information, not only on Live from FSS, but how you could book the studio if you have an interest in hosting your own show on Facebook, YouTube, and or Periscope. We want to wish everyone a great Thursday and a great weekend. And we'll see you the next time that we go live from FSS.